Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is the voice of the St. Mary's Gales, Alex Jensen. Alex, you've been broadcasting a team that's won 14 straight games. How's life, man? Boys, boys, it's going well. Let's uh, let's not bring up the winning streak too much. I'm, I'm, you guys know I'm a former baseball player, very superstitious. <laughs> don't step on the chalk lines. Don't mention winning streaks. We're all good. So 14 in a row uh, for St. <laughs> Mary's. Um, why is it Australian night tonight? Isn't every night Australian night, Alex, at St. Mary's? Well, I, I would I would assume you guys would know that it's Australia Day and uh, uh, on Friday actually. But it, it actually is. Um, so the, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be handing out. Um, Kangaroo T-shirts. The, the teams are going to be wearing them in the uh, in the warm-ups. They're going to give them to the students. Uh, but while that game is being played, actually, it'll be Australia Day down under. So that's the reason. But they, this is the second year they've done this. They, I think it was against USF last year, which coincidentally is uh, is green and gold, the the, the national colors for uh, the Australian Olympic team. <laughs> uh, Chance would have it. But uh, uh, they're going to be serving meat pies at the um, at the concession stands, which is an Australian uh, treat, or so Emmett Nar tells me. <laughs> and, uh, and they'll play the Australian anthem, so it's uh, it, it'll, it'll be it'll be it'll be a cool night. And I know it's really cool for uh, for the six Aussies we have on the roster. Alex, for those that haven't been to McEwen Pavilion and seen a game there, what's the environment like for a game like tonight with rival BYU? Uh, well, first of all, we got to get you guys out there at some point. Um, yeah. But it is, uh, you know, actually. Uh, uh, Bob McKillop, who's the head coach of Davidson, compared it to Cameron Indoor in Duke. Just the size of it, and I mean, I know obviously it's not Cameron Indoor, right? Um, but when when there was a game in 2009 in the NIT when Steph Curry was in his his last year at Davidson and Patty Mills when his was in his sophomore year at St. Mary's, and that was obviously billed as a big game, but he compared it to Cameron Indoor. It is small, fellas. I mean, the roof is low. Uh, it seats maybe 3,500 <laughs> with standing room only. And I anticipate it being standing room only tonight uh, in a sellout crowd. Um, as I'm sure, you know, the guys have told you that have been out there, it gets really, really loud and really hot in there. It's, it's, uh, it's really unlike anything that any, any environment that I've ever been in just because of the size of the gym and the amount of people in there and the high level of basketball that's been played there the last, uh, the last 10 or so years. But yeah, I mean, you, you guys got to come out at some point. We'll, uh, you know, we'll make sure we we uh, we treat you to to um, to some fine Moraga cuisine, as I was talking to Aaron <laughs> yesterday, and uh, and uh, maybe some meat pies. You never know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If meat pies is a sell, I ain't coming anytime soon. But I would like to go. So well, uh, actually, what I'm told is that meat pies, like the cheaper the meat pies, the better, uh, is what I'm told. So like it's a taco, like, I mean, I, apparently. Uh, They're so like good. Like a taco yeah. or a hot dog or something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, what's the vibe going into this game from the St. Mary's side? Because for BYU, it's like, okay, that first game went in OT. It was at home. It's certainly going to be a challenge, but I can't wait to see this one. What do you think of the matchup tonight? Well, it's always a big game. I mean, when, you know, when BYU comes to town, it's, it's always a big game. Uh, obviously, you know, BYU, I think, I was, I was actually looking at this last night. With one more win, St. Mary's will have their 11th consecutive 21 uh, season. With three more wins, BYU will have their 13th consecutive 21 season. So you know what it's going to mean. I mean, it's going to mean two teams that are, you know, have NCAA tournament aspirations year in and year out, uh, two teams that are at the top of the West Coast Conference every single year. So, yeah, it's a big game. I mean, and, and you know, obviously St. Mary's kind of had the upper hand the last couple of years, but there's obviously no doubting around here the talent that BYU has on their roster. And, you know, like I told you guys uh, a couple a month ago or whatever that was before we uh, before the game in Provo, I've been really impressed with what Dave Rose has been able to do with this team and, you know, slowing the tempo down. Uh, last year they were like fourth in tempo on Kempom. This year like they're like 250th. Uh, but it's made them more efficient. He's adjusted to his personnel. So, I mean, I, I think everyone here is anticipating a, a tougher road of hoe than it's been than it was certainly last year. The voice of Gales basketball, Alex Jensen, with us on BYU Sports Nation. There was, I guess, a collective idea that last year's team at St. Mary's was the best ever. I mean, certainly in the conversation, is this team this year better, thus making them the best ever for St. Mary's? Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, there was a team in 2008, 2009 that won, that actually set the school record for consecutive wins at 15. And it was a team that featured Patty Mills and uh, Omar Samhan, Diamond Simpson. They were good players on that team, really good players. Uh, and that's kind of the team that Randy Bennett, at least a, as of a couple years ago, always compared his teams to. 
Uh, in terms of having just a dominant guy, though, I don't know that I've anybody that I've seen anybody in a St. Mary's uniform as dominant as Jock Landale has been this year. And when you have someone like that and you throw in the experience, the team is certainly in the conversation with the team last year. I mean, I think um, you know they went through some growing pains from going into last year to this year, losing guys like Joe Rahan and Dame Pinot and Kyle Clark, who's now out for the year. Uh, but yeah, certainly right up there. I mean, this one, the one last year, um, and, and that team in 08, 09, along with maybe a couple of others. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's right there. I think there's still work to do before you put them at the top of that, at the top of that list, but definitely in the conversation, especially considering what they've been doing over the, uh, since Thanksgiving. Are you aware of the St. Mary's face from Spencer? I, you know what? I brought that up to Ben a couple of days ago uh, when he when he called and asked me to come on today. I am aware of it, but I would love to hear the origin. So Spencer, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when BYU is one in five in Moraga, Alex, it doesn't evoke good feelings for BYU fans, and the emotion just got really raw at some point. They decided to take a screen cap of it, and it uh, say, you made the piece. It was easy. Yeah, it became a thing. <laughs> I got, you look very frustrated in that picture. That's, that's <laughs> all I know. And very frustrated. And I mean, trust me. I mean, you know, we've had that feeling about BYU around here as well. I mean, there was a stretch there with Kyle Collinsworth <laughs> and all those guys where it was, man, it was tough. So I get it, man. We, we, we've, uh, we've all been there, right? <laughs> yes. You know, my pain, Alex, you know, my pain. <laughs> hey, good luck winning a 15th straight because you've won 14 yeah, straight 14 at St. Mary's. Row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough, guys. That's enough. <laughs> Alex, good to talk to you as always, man. Enjoy the call tonight. Fellas, it was a pleasure. We'll see you in Vegas. Alex Jensen on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. He's